This week's episode discusses the crime of infant murder, which might be a difficult topic for some to hear. Please proceed to listen only if you are comfortable with this subject matter. Cries, warm cuddles, and looks that could melt the worst moods can only come from one place, a child. Children are innocent and completely unaware of the possibilities of evil, especially after they come into this world. They simply long for the soft touch and loving kisses a mother and a father could give. And the beauty of a child is that they will love you no matter what has been done to them. In the late 1800s, a man came across a package in the Thames River. Upon opening it, he found a baby girl, four months old, and a baby boy, around 13 months old. Horrified, he called the police. It didn't take long for the police to connect the items inside of the box to a local baby farmer named Amelia Dyer. And when they found Amelia Dyer's apartment, it was filled with the stench of death and the evidence of murder. In the case of Amelia Dyer, these babies' lives were short and tortured, no matter how much they cried or ached for someone to save them. Amelia Dyer's joy came from watching them die, and for three decades, a baby farmer was able to obtain a child from the moment of their birth to the moment of their death. But a woman who loved to kill babies, who loved to watch them as they struggled for their last breath, evil disguised as a loving midwife, Amelia Dyer, the baby killer. Hello, this is Caitlin from GBR Life of Crimes. In this podcast, we discuss women crimes and the psychology behind them. Why did these women commit these crimes? Was it mental illness? Did they do it just for fun? Keep listening because this week is about Amelia Dyer, baby killer. Amelia Dyer was born in 1836, and she was the youngest of five kids total, after two sisters had died. If you're like me, you probably think she killed her sisters, but there is no evidence of that, nor was there even said to be a possibility. One fact that did happen to Amelia at a very young age was her mother's mental illness, which came from typhus fever. After her mother was inflicted with the illness, which comes from fleas, ticks, chiggers, or lice, she began to have violent fits. This is not uncommon of this illness, and these fits could last for days, and Amelia was in charge of caring for her when this would happen. However, Amelia still learned to read and write in a comfortable home. Her father was a shoemaker and was able to earn a decent living off of it, making the childhood of Amelia pretty normal, except for the issues that came from her mother. Her mother eventually died, and Amelia went to live with an aunt in Bristol, where she learned how to be a corset maker. Then her father died, 
and her oldest brother inherited the shoemaking business. Women at that time did not get the inheritance of the family money. But Amelia was not without, since she had married by the age of 24 to George Thomas. But George was 59. This was a significant age gap. But the two had lied to each other about their ages and the marriage certificate. Amelia stated she was 30 and George said he was 48. This did not stop the couple from having children. They had at least one daughter, Ellen Thomas, though it is not known if there was any more who may have died. Having lived a life with plenty of events to shape a person, Amelia wasn't going to hold anything back. When Amelia was married, she trained to be a nurse and midwife because Amelia was clearly the type of person who wouldn't be left stranded if she was going to be on her own. She did marry an older man and she knew that she could easily be left alone again since both of her parents had already died. And while she had two older brothers, it didn't mean they would support their sister. So Amelia used education as a way to obtain the comfortable lifestyle she was looking for. And nursing school proved to be the best choice for her because that's where she met a woman who introduced her to baby farming. Baby farming was a way for women in unfortunate circumstances to have someone care for their ch children or child. The person who was farming for the babies would receive the money for doing so. The money could be in payments or a lump sum. At least that's how Amelia handled her business. Five to 10 euros is what she charged. Today, that's just about a couple hundred dollars. But the cost of living at the time and having five to 10 euros per child would have been able to sustain a nice living, a comfortable life that wasn't extravagant, but it also wouldn't cause any attention to come from it, especially if you're killing those children and pocketing the money. In 1869, George Thomas had passed away, and Amelia was left to care for herself and her daughter. This, of course, wouldn't be an issue because she had baby farming to fall back on. So this is when the murders truly began. And it was so easy. All Amelia had to do was look through the paper to find a woman who wanted to find a family to care or take their child and she went hunting. In the case of Evelina Marmon, who was the mother of a baby girl about four months old, she had listed an ad in the newspaper for her daughter to be given to a nice couple. It just so happens that when that ad showed up in the newspaper, it was next to another ad about wanting to adopt a child. It was Miss Marmon who contacted this couple looking for a child. Little did she know that the couple was really just Miss Dyer disguised as a Mrs. Harding. Dyer showed up to take the little girl just a couple days later. And when Evelina was shocked, she didn't say anything about this woman's age. And she only noticed that the woman seemed to be kind and loving towards her daughter. So, she went through with it and paid Miss Dyer 10 euros. Her daughter was killed almost immediately after Dyer returned home with her. She used white edging tape and wrapped it around the little baby's neck. Then, she watched as the baby struggled for life until it died. The next day, Dyer went and found a little boy to bring home. 
Since she didn't have enough of the tape because she had just used it, she took the material from the deceased baby's body and used that to strangle the little boy. Both of the babies were then packed into a suitcase with rocks, tied to it, and dropped into the river. This was one of many methods Amelia used to kill these children. She also used to help birth the children, and in doing so, had access to kill them immediately. But her preferred method there was to starve them, and she would hide the cries with a syrup containing opium, and at that time it was called Mother's Friend. The babies would then go to sleep and eventually die of starvation. This was after a while, because the process would continue for days. In 1872, Dyer was suspected of neglect when she kept calling for the doctor to take the bodies of babies who had died in her care. The doctor noticed a large amount of babies were dying in her care, and he thought she was just neglecting them. So she was sentenced to jail for six months. Upon her release, all she learned was not to tell the doctors. Just dispose of the bodies yourself. After her time in jail, Amelia learned more than just disposing of the bodies herself. She also learned that if she was suspected, she would just fake a mental breakdown and stay in a hospital for a short amount of time. Usually after this, the claims would go away or she would just move away. But in 1896, 27 years after she began baby farming, she made a mistake. That little girl and boy that she killed and threw into the river, they floated up to the surface and they were found by a man walking by the river. He saw the suitcase and opened it. It didn't take long for the police to piece it to Dyer since the edging tape she used to strangle the babies had her name and address on it. Sherlock was not needed to solve this one. She herself admitted to the crimes when she was caught and even helped the police know which bodies were killed by her by admitting she typically only used the white edging tape. After 50 more bodies were found in the river, 20 were immediately suspected of being from her, but the remaining 30 were likely from her after further investigation. Doris Marmon and Harry Simmon were her two last victims, but they were also the reasons she got caught. This podcast is brought to you by Caitlin from GBR Life, LLC. If you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to this podcast and feel free to find me on social media under GBR Life and feel free to visit my website, gbrlife.com. This podcast is open to any sponsorships. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Back to this week's episode. Over the three decades of Amelia's baby farming business, it's been calculated that she killed around 300 to 600 babies. At first, she was thought to have an accomplice of her daughter and son-in-law because at the time of her arrest, they lived with her. So when she was taken in, she actually tried to make sure their innocence was known by writing her confession and saying this within it. Sir, Will you kindly grant me the favor of presenting this to the magistrate on Saturday the 18th instant I have made the statement out, for I may not have the opportunity, then I must relieve my mind. I do know and I feel my days are numbered on this earth, but I do feel it is an awful thing drawing innocent people into trouble. 
I do know I should have to answer before my maker in heaven for the awful crimes I have committed, but as God Almighty is my judge in heaven, on earth as well, neither my daughter nor her husband, I do most solemnly declare neither of them have had anything to do with it. They never knew I contemplated doing such a wicked thing until it was too late. I am speaking the truth and nothing but the truth, as I hope to be forgiven. I and I alone must stand before my Maker in heaven to answer it all witness my hand. Amelia Dyer So her daughter and son-in-law were discharged because the police also couldn't find any evidence they were helping her commit these crimes either. They did find that there were evidence showing the opposite. It was clear that the murders had been occurring for an extremely long time, with letters from mothers asking about their babies and a large amount of children's clothing. There was also a substantial amount of witnesses that saw questionable things which helped to prove it was her and her alone. Although, she didn't try to maintain any innocence during this investigation and she did try to plead insanity, but with guilt. Since she had used this tactic before, I would assume that she thought it would keep her alive at least, but when her daughter told everyone how her mother used to tell her that she was an angel maker, and that's why all the children kept disappearing, the reality of her mental state became clear. She wasn't crazy, but she sure did like to kill babies. She was arrested on April 4th. Her trial began on April 22nd, and she was hanged on June 10th at exactly 9 a.m., all in the same year of 1896. It took the jury only four and a half minutes to find her guilty, because this wasn't a case of did she do it, it was a case of, was she actually crazy? They quickly said no, and I'm sure many suspected she was just evil. After this all occurred, it was clear there was a problem having baby farms and laws because much stricter laws came out for adoptions. The authorities began to search personal ads to find more baby farms and try to end it entirely. In the early 1900s, reformers tried to go farther with changing these practices and went to parliament to make it so that fathers of illeg illegitimate children were to be held accountable financially. Amelia Dyer, in my opinion, is clearly a sociopath and definitely a serial killer. So you understand a sociopath is someone who lacks remorse, but has guilt and empathy in some cases. They may have small amounts of emotions, but they're shallow and fleeting. They may have an attachment to one or few people. They're definitely irresponsible. They always seem to violate the law in some capacity. They lie constantly and they have very aggressive, angry rage like behavior. A psychopath, which is what I'm sure many people have thought of her as while listening to this, is not actually Amelia Dyer. A psychopath has zero guilt or remorse. They pretend to have feelings. Uh, they can't form any true attachment. And the reason that Amelia Dyer falls into sociopath is because she was showing that she had an attachment to her daughter, for example. And she was showing a small a bit of emotion towards the entirety of this as she was brought in uh, at, when she became guilty. So it was very clear that we're dealing with somebody who has some form of emotion, 
but is also a very aggressive, angry person. And very likely has antisocial personality disorder. And one of the common traits of somebody with antipersonality disorder is actual substance abuse. And it was also known, although I did not say, that she was a heavy drinker and she took opium often. And there were many times that she actually would state that she was going to kill herself, but she would go into these hospitals due to these mental breakdowns. And there was an occasion that she actually did try, allegedly, to kill herself. But with somebody who is such a heavy drinker and taking opium, what she tried to do didn't work because her body had built up such a high tolerance. And I think she may have known this, which is why she did not actually die or try to truly kill herself. But again, I go back to the fact that she did show some love for her daughter. But I may be a fool and others may be a fool as to whether or not she actually did have any of this emotion and she could be a true psychopath. But from understanding and reading everything that I could read about her, I see sociopath in this circumstance. And like I said, definitely antisocial personality disorder. As she, did, she does have the manipulativeness, the risk-taking behavior, the aggression, the impulsivity, irritability, and so forth. And proof of this was all throughout what she did to these children. She enjoyed watching them die, but she did it in an aggressive manner, how she killed them. Whereas many women would just poison she decided not to poison she decided to strangle and then watch these children pass away right in front of her a very horrible sad disgusting thing that anybody could ever do to a child she in my opinion is also just pure evil Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Next week on GBR Life of Crimes, Elizabeth Bathory. But she's also known as Countess Dracula. <laughs>